Welcome to the Runners World podcast with me, Rick Pierce, and me, Ben Hobson. Today we're celebrating our 200th episode. Hello. We're looking at some of the highlights from 2022 in the company of all the Runners World team. This is going to be absolute chaos. <laughs> <laughs> so many mics, too many mics, too many people. So uh, apologies now, yeah. but tough. Actually, a few 200 themed bits because we did, we did put the call out to people and said, you know. Uh, have you got any ideas for the 200th episode? And it should be like, can it be 200 themed? And actually, this is an interesting one. It was uh, running a marathon in 200 minutes is apparently a thing. So this is from uh, listener Grace Cameron. She wrote in, I've been hearing more recently about people aiming for 200 in the marathon. And I had to look this up as I had no idea it was a thing. But it's a 200 minute goal, a new concept. Uh, she thinks it's quite a nice uh, middle ground between 3.30 and 3 hours. Quite like that. It took me an alarming amount of time to work out how much that <laughs> yeah. was. In hours. It's a 320 uh, marathon, isn't yeah. it? It's a 320 I'm marathon. just waiting for someone else to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> but quite like it. Maybe we could do a plan, the uh, sub-200 plan. Yeah, I think that's good. Surely the sub-200 plan would have to be only in 200-metre reps as well. You'd have sort to do all your running. Sort of Zatapec kind yeah. of, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And the other one was uh, apparently 200 miles in 24 hours. That's, a, that's the four-minute mile of the ultra world. Okay. I'm getting pretty close. Uh, the great uh, Alexander Sorokin uh, beat his own record at the 24-hour European Championships, running 198.6 miles in 24 hours. Blimey. I know. That's like a car journey. Yeah, it is. Hey, look, there's a quiz coming up when we go into what that actually is equivalent of, so stick around. <laughs> Listeners, <laughs> Listeners ready, stick around get, for that. Get ready. Um, right, so we, we got everyone in because we want to talk about um, personal and general highlight of 2022. So, yes. Um, who would like to start? Not me, I haven't thought of any. Okay. Jenny Bazon, maybe you could start. I knew you were going to pick me first, Rick. I could just feel it. Uh, okay, so I'm obviously going to talk about my 70.3. Sorry to bring this up again. Um, but I would say um, running the half marathon and feeling like I got it in the bag. Because I'd I've trained really hard and I'd question whether I was going to be able to do it. And I actually started running and felt really good. And I thought... I actually am going to do this. And then I think then seeing my mum and dad and they were just screaming like, you look amazing, you're smashing it. And then I felt like I was winning. Um, so yeah, it was just really, really nice and definitely a good memory. That's good. I wonder how many personal highlights around this table will be races. Interesting. Interesting. Let's find out. L later. Uh, what was your like wider uh, overarching professional running world? Okay, moment? yeah. So I had a thought about this last night, and it was definitely um, Jake Whiteman winning um, gold at the World Champs, and watching his dad Jeff commentating, and he was just so excited, and obviously trying to remain impartial. But then you just see him put his hands in the air, and then you see you can. There was a video that sort of did the rounds on Twitter, and you can see then his mum Susan running up to the commentary box, and she's like got a flag around her arms, and she's like he's won, and yeah, it was just like a really really lovely family moment. That was a good one. That was a definite good one. His dad really kept it together, didn't he? My dad would be going absolutely berserk. He's a professional to the end, isn't he? He was like, yeah. and he's won. Oh, that's good. Yeah, got a medal for uh, Team GB there. Like, actually, knows your son winning the, uh, yeah. the World Championship. There's a good video of it, though, isn't it? Sort of like the 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 physical actions that he's doing do not relate to his voice, <laughs> his voice coming out. Yeah. So he's yeah. kind of like stood up and he's going, ah, ah, but the voice yeah. is kind of like, oh, there's a great little effort there yeah. from Jake Wyman. Yeah. <laughs> I read afterwards that um, his mum was his PE teacher and Jeff used to do the commentary at his PE sports days. So he's had like lots of practice at remaining <laughs> impartial. <laughs> Those big PE events. Yeah. Right, I think we should go for Joe Mackey. A huge year of uh, running for you, Joe, I'd say. Hello. Uh, well, huge, medium, I'd say. Yeah, medium. It's all relative, isn't it? It was all relative. Um, I think personal highlight for me, was um, running the Berlin Marathon. Um, it had been quite a long time since I'd run a marathon with COVID and everything, and big build up. First time I run Berlin, amazing race, amazing city. Um, and I got a PB, just gonna sneak that in there. So yeah, Boop. that was a great moment. I mean, hard to pick out one particular moment. The whole race was brilliant. Yeah, um, yeah so I'll go with that. And you ran what, three, 310 was it? 312. 312, yeah. yeah. I, was yeah. To, I was trying to run 310, so yeah. You have to go back, yeah, time. yeah. But yeah, obviously loads of great bits along the course, and um, yeah, and I think there was a there was also a moment at the end which kind of rolls into my more general highlight because it was a race where, you know, I wasn't directly involved in this obviously, but um, Elliot Kipchoge was a reasonable reasonable amount of time ahead of me, <laughs> and he and he broke the world record, and 
Although I didn't see it, I'm going to have it as my highlight because there was a moment when I'd finished and I was, um, you know, sort of collapsed against the post, drinking a drinking a non-alcoholic beer and feeling sort of quite proud of myself and wondering how I was going to walk back. And the kind of news filtered through. I could hear people talking about it. And it just really brought home to me this amazing thing about running, that you can be involved in the event where this incredible athlete, I mean, the best marathon runner of all time, you would have to say, yeah. has broken the world record. And although I didn't see it, although I was a long way back, you know, I was actually involved in the same race and ran the same course as him on the same day. And, uh, you know, as did all the other people around me in all their various different times. And that's a really special thing about, about running, I think. Definitely, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're not going to get on the Formula One start grid, are you? But you can be on the same course as yeah. the great yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You're, yeah. you know, you're not getting on the pitch for the World Cup games. Yeah. Um, yeah, but in running, you can line up on the same start line. And yeah. Albeit <laughs> a little bit later yeah, than they sure. go over the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You cross yeah. the same finish line. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's, always, there's, there's that thing, you know, there's the blue, the blue line at New York, or wherever it is, and you can kind of see that that's the racing line. and. It's there in front of you. It's, like, it's not like it's not separate. It, it's, the elites follow yeah, it. Yeah, same course, isn't it? Same yeah. course. Yeah, and yeah, you yeah. can just sit there and go, yeah, there's the blue line. That's that's I can I can follow that too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you may you may at one point have put your foot in exactly the same place as you know the guy's been breaking the world yeah. record and you know an hour or so before. Yeah, it's incredible. All right, I think we should go for the next next highlight. Let's do it. Who? Uh, let's go for Kate Carter. Okay, uh, what, my personal one or my... Let's go personal first. Okay, um, so I suppose, I've, can I can I have sort of two, one is a race and one isn't a race? You can literally do whatever yeah, you, you want. You can, okay. it's, it's lawless here. <laughs> <laughs> so race-wise, uh, I had a really good summer of like good races and I, I won a race, so hey, that's, got, that's got to be there in there. we go. Uh, won the Dorking 10k, so that was fun, um, especially as it involves hills and I don't like hills. So. What was your What was your prize? Um, Wine, beer. Uh, anything, anything? No, uh, uh, cash. Yes, <laughs> even, <laughs> even better. better. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and a little trophy thing as well. Oh, good. Um, yeah, yeah. But um, but apart from that, I was just thinking because when you said you know, I wonder how many of people will choose a race. I guess you crystallise your your training or whatever around those moments. But actually, I'd have to say generally, it's just kind of my my group that I run with pretty much every Sunday and just kind of the Sunday long runs where, you know, one week you're feeling great and you feel like you're pushing the pace and the next week you feel absolutely dreadful and you're just clinging on to someone who's chatting away in your ear, you know, and just those sort of moments. I, I just really have appreciated them more than ever this year. And what about the, uh, in the wider world? Um, well, this was tricky because I could like just get really, really geeky in about athletics and any <laughs> for about, have we got an hour and a half in fact yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. keep it to around um, sort of 75 minutes yeah yeah, yeah great and then also shout out for, for my favorite one of my favorite athletes who isn't a runner but you know it's athletics mondo duplantis who's just like you know pole vault sensation um but my running moment would be um would actually be laura muir winning the bronze uh, in Eugene at the World Championships, yeah. uh, which might be weird because obviously she then went on and won gold in, in the Commonwealth. But the the bronze in Eugene was... I, whenever I think about Laura Muir, I think she is kind of the running equivalent of Andy Murray in that she is a generational talent uh, who in any other era would win everything going but has the sort of good luck bad luck whatever you want to call it of being in an era where you've got two other people who are like that yeah yeah you know so it's like having Nadal and Federer up and so on and she's got like Faith Kip Yegon and Sege who are in that race and the three of them in that race it's I mean it, it I just watched it again this morning and it sends goosebumps down my spine it's proper like slug fest of a yeah. race from the um, gun as well from, it's it? just yeah, yeah. gun to tape i mean it's just insane um and also like the other thing i love about laura muir is that she there is a, it's my favorite moment in all of athletics is the moment where laura muir's face changes in a race because that is when it's game on <laughs> yeah, yeah. and it's you can see it and there's no other athlete who literally goes from like you know calm poker face to bring it on <laughs> <laughs> and I love that moment. Yeah, I love that because a lot, a lot of great running, like Kipchoge, is, is very serene, isn't it? And you don't get a sense of how hard someone's trying. Yeah. yeah. But I think with Laura Muir, it's like, oh wow, this is someone who really is like yeah. giving it one hundred percent here. Yeah. 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 And they all kind of collapsed after that race and lay there for about ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like amazing. Yeah. Right. I think we should move on, Ben. Who's going to be next? You can choose. Uh, you. Oh right. Uh. <laughs> Personal highlight. I think this is a bit dull, but I think just running regularly again because I had knee surgery. Oh, man, I was going to say that. Jeez, come on, Sorry, mate. Um, 
so I, I looked down the barrel of like not running for a bit and obviously like when you even when you're going for like very minor surgery like the guy next to me was talking about his knee replacement and he was in so much pain he couldn't sleep and he was back again and I started thinking oh my god like what if this goes wrong and I can't run again and you sort of, I thought that's like a horrifying idea to, to look at um so obviously it took a while to get back to it maybe like two or three months but just to go back to consistent running did the half marathon with you which was another highlight thanks mate but yeah actually it's a bit of a cliche but it made me realize that how much i rely on running how much i want it to be like a consistent part of my life forever yeah, yeah. so actually just getting back to doing it um with a maybe a renewed appreciation for it that's that one um and then i think killian journey at utmb um it's always been a race that I'm never, I, I feel like I'm actually never going to do UTMB, but there's been times in my life where I'm like, I'm going to do UTMB, 100%. Uh, and he's, he is very much a sort of Kipchoge of uh, mountain running, I think, and he's as consistent and has been winning for as mm. long as possible. And, and what he did at UTMB, finishing under 20 hours for the first time, is astonishing. And he's also a really nice bloke, I think, along with it. So he's, uh, that's my professional highlight. This is the Runner's World Podcast. Alice. Hello. <laughs> um, I, I mean, personal highlight must be, and same Kate really, just joining the team. <laughs> Absolutely. This year. Um, <laughs> Bring the newbie on. <laughs> um, personal and uh, running professional world highlights. Well, like Jen, I also did a 70.3 this summer. So oh I did my goodness. think the about. The caliber of athlete here is absolutely. <laughs> I did think about, oh, was it that half marathon at the end of that after doing a 90K on the bike? But actually, it was such a slog. I found it so hard. There was, I think, more walking than there was running. And it was in France. It was hot. It was horrible. It took a lot of. Um, mental strength to actually will my body to get over the finish lines so actually I'm gonna park that it's not that one um <laughs> and instead I'm gonna say my most memorable run this year was a local 8k loop around Bushy Park um it's an area I've just moved to recently and it was rutting season I don't know if any of you have witnessed rut rutting season before but it's when the deers go absolutely bonkers and uh, they're clashing antlers and they're, they're so loud. And I was just running around and I was thinking, what on earth is going on? And uh, to top it all off, the sun was setting. It was a beautiful, gorgeous evening. It was quite mild. And I got to the Diana Fountain, which is the middle of Bushy Park. And the sky was just burnt oranges and bubblegum pinks. And it was, it was honestly beautiful. It was one of those, I've got to stop. I've got to stop my watch. I've got to take a picture. I need to take this in. And actually, it just made me... It just made me feel really thankful to have the time to go outside and escape the, at the end of the day and, and enjoy the sunset. So that, I think, for me was my personal highlight. And then professional, I wrote down uh, when Ailish won gold at the 10,000 metres at the Commonwealth Girl Games in Birmingham this summer, um, obviously following in her mother's footsteps and it was her first major title um it was actually her fourth commonwealth games and she's previously come sixth every time so this is her first gold so it was a real kudos moment for her but what really got me was um when she crossed the line and she ran up into the stands and she hugged her mum and I'm a, I'm a pretty emotional person anyway but uh to see the tears and to see how much it really meant not just for her but for her mother too yeah, yeah. Oh, I was bawling my eyes out. So <laughs> that that for me, I think I was like, wow, yeah, I was really rooting for her. So I think that was the most special and the thing I'll remember the most. That was a good one. That was great. Yeah. 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 That sort of because also like just the sort of the story behind both of their achievements was sort mm -hmm. of the struggle with the mum and then and, you know, she was, she's heralded as this sort of like great talent. And it's sort of like the pressure and the sixth, as you say, like the fourth Commonwealth Games and all the performances that haven't been up to scratch. And it's just like it all kind of just met at that one moment of just being like, oh, good, it happened. Yeah, I, I think you could just see how much it also meant for Liz, for her mum yeah. as well. It was, you know, she'd won that race 32 years beforehand. And I mean, yeah, it was yeah very emotional. Yeah. Um, next up, Andy. My uh, thank you. My, my um, <laughs> personal highlight would be it's like others, I guess, is is returning to to racing uh, in the summer after two years out because of lockdown, etc. Um, and that was the 60 marathon in the Alps in in France. And um, I mean, in in many ways, one of the toughest races I've ever done. But but I mean, absolutely stunning parts of it you know running up a bobsleigh track was was kind of a, a you know particularly kind of memorable part in the first half 
Um, but the whole thing was just, I mean, stunning, really hard. Um, my toes, like six, five, six months on, still haven't recovered. I'm hoping that they'll be in good shape for, for sandal season in spring, but I, I, I doubt it. Um, but it was just great to, to be back involved and, and surrounded by fellow runners, you know, in a kind of, uh, you know, I, I didn't feel like I was particularly qualified to be there because everyone else had uh, trekking poles. I felt like a bit of an interloper. <laughs> Um, but I blundered my way through and, um, yeah, I mean, by the end I was stumbling like a, a drunkard because uh, my quads had lost all control. But after the race, it was just like, my God, that was absolutely epic. So it was a really nice way to return to, to running after so long out. Um, I reckon everyone who saw you without poles were like, whoa, this guy. Wow. He's hardcore. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Who the hell is this guy? <laughs> he doesn't need poles. Yeah. His quad's doing it all. Well, I suffered for that. Um, and the wider world of running, I, again, I'm going to go to the Berlin Marathon, but I'm going to select Bottle Klaus, a yeah. bit of an unsung hero, one of many unsung heroes. I guess, you know, you, you see the kind of headline performance of Kip Schaubig, and rightly everyone pays their due and reverence to that amazing performance. But I guess what, what I liked about this story is it kind of brought out the kind of, the, the in quotes, backroom staff, the kind of army of volunteers, the army of, because he is a volunteer. So this is the guy who's um, kind of giving Kipchoge his, his bottle of carb drink at every uh, station. And uh, what I liked about it is that he, he's kind of developed it into a, a real craft. You know, he practices. Um, with, you know, a tulip in a vase to get the handover just right. When he sees Kipchoge approaching, he's like, it, it's about eye contact. And I shout him because he's in a tunnel. Um, and then once he's uh, got a clean handover done, he jumps on his bike oh, and, and has to absolutely dash the celebra five, five his K. celebration <laughs> of a successful bottle changeover is like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> full fist pump in the air, like, yeah, jumps up and down. And then the grabbing of the bike. Is yeah. The bit, yeah, yeah. It's yeah and he, uh, you know, he has to really go fast yeah. between stations. And um, yeah, I just, I thought it was a really nice, a really nice story um, yeah. from that amazing race. Yeah, definitely. You kind of got, a, I mean, obviously it's the athlete who's doing the hard work at that particular moment and for the, you know, the race, but the back behind the scenes stuff was really like, you do see that, like he wouldn't be able to do that without this one slightly eccentric man on a bike <laughs> Indeed. You know, yeah. well Kip Chogi said he, he he calls him his hero so yeah. I mean he's he, he recognises the importance of what he does for him so yeah. that's really nice as well that is good Ben tell us about your highlights right okay uh, I mean it's like an echo chamber in here I'm going to just say it, it, uh, I think it was kind of the year where I was running pain free, which was very nice. That hasn't happened for a while. There's always been a little bit of something in the background, which I've had to ignore or kind of like get work around. So a bit more of that. And then I would just, yeah, exp going out, being able then to just go and run more and, and run further and explore like the forest near where I live and have time to do all that and like just appreciate out outside, which has been very much it. Um, and a, sort of that, I would say that first that first pint after the half marathon, being going back to racing. I like the fourth one. Yeah, the, that was also awesome. <laughs> that was that was delicious. <laughs> that one was very good. But the first one was also awesome. the first one was good. Yeah, we and it was that all those sort of feelings that came back again, and it was all the sensations. It was the you'd finish the race and you're very tired and everything sort of hurts a little bit, um, and then you walk somewhere that isn't all isn't quite open yet, so you hang around and you everything's getting a bit crusty because it's like you know the sweat's drying out and it was kind of and it, you know you kind of got those all the, it's not just the end of the race it's kind of like un, they were familiar sensations but you hadn't felt them for a while so it's that sort of getting a little chilly because you've calling down and you've sat down for a bit too long and you stand up and it's a bit achy but you need the loo and it's like it's it it was all those little it wasn't just the race it was the sort of like the little tiny yeah. bits afterwards and I was just like oh yes it's those little things, not packing enough things. Because I was like, I'm not, don't need a race bag. Oh, you went, yeah, you went bag free, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. went bag free, which meant I just then sat there going, God, I'm actually freezing now. <laughs> um, so there was that. That was kind of my personal stuff, just kind of like re immersing back into that world of running. Also, re reminding myself how hard racing is, yeah. which is just the, the biggest, not the biggest shock, but the greatest sort of like, oh, yeah, this really sucks when you can't, you're not fit. Um, I think like wider world of running i kind of feel like 
bits of the bit of running that kind of piqued my interest was stuff like people not like the growth of the fkt kind of stuff um i know that sort of happened for ages but kind of just seems more and more like people are taking on these challenges and like these these setting these fastest known times and um just kind of really enjoying seeing people do that because it's kind of like it's like a really sort of like it's that amateurish yeah diy diy yeah. kind of like gonna go and try this thing out and like and i kind of like that a lot like i'd kind of like seeing people um doing mad distances on the, off their own you know under their own steam and kind of like sort of little sub genre of running that's kind of like people going oh he's done that in that time hmm, interesting you know and it's and they're like oh yeah that is really fun i quite like that side of it yeah so that was that's my kind of maybe me discovering more of that this year yeah. and then sort of like looking at routes that people do i like routes so i was just yeah. looking at like the maps and going yeah. oh yeah good route yeah that's <laughs> fun. great route great route yeah that was hey, it should we do a quick um christmas quiz yes jen you might have to go and share the mic with uh with ben okay um so we'll we'll finish with a we'll finish with a Christmas quiz. Eight questions, all themed around running that's happened in 2022. Play along at home. Uh, question one: What takes longer, the time for Eli Kipchoge to complete this year's Berlin Marathon, or the time it takes to cook a 2.5 kilogram chicken in the oven? How are we how are we alerting like that we're going to be the ones answering? <laughs> Anyone can answer. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you uh, can buzz in. What's quicker? What's quicker? It Kipchoge. It's actually the chicken. Oh, man. Apparently, chicken's got 120 minutes and Kipchoge's 121. So it's a close run thing. You could set a timer to him. <laughs> you could set a timer to when him. When does the chicken need to go in? <laughs> when does he start raining? You know, like, when, exactly. when does he start? Uh, Wait, is this, this is the undiscovered secret of Kipchoge's speed. He's always got a chicken in the oven. Right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Can't get home. Can't get home. <laughs> yeah. Five. And on your marks. <laughs> oh, my God, the chicken. <laughs> Um, Killian, Killian Jorne became the first person to do what at the UTMB this year? Was it win the race without using trekking poles, finish in less than 20 hours, or complete the race without feeling the need to write a blog about it? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not the latter. Not the, la not the last they're, they're one. 20 hours, it was sub 20. Sub tw first person to do sub 20 hours. Um, question three, how many national or European records did Ailish McColgan break in 2022? Come on, Alice. Is it two, three, or four? Three. How many national or European records? Three. You're two. going three. I'm going two. I've got three down here. It's. Oh no! Now I'm going to have to try and remember what they are. Five k, ten k, British, both British, and then European. There's a European for. I should have written this down. Should I? This yeah, is why this quiz is so yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I'm pretty sure it's three. Okay. Let's anyway. go with three. Let's Thanks. go with three. <laughs> <laughs> Um, according to Strava's year in sports statistics, how much further are women likely to run when running in groups as opposed to solo? Is it 5%, 10% or 40%? Oh, because oh, I say the options again. 5%, 10% or 40%? I wrote this piece. I, like I still can't remember. Is it 10%? I saw I feel it's 10%. Yeah, 10%. Yeah. 10% further. How many laps of the notorious Barclay Marathons did Jasmine Paris complete this year? Was it one three or five she completed the fun run didn't she the fun runs what is the fun run i can't remember how many laps that is i think it's three 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 three, three. yeah um <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is. What was, that? was that a yes it is three three oh yeah yeah it's three um i think she's i think she might be going back uh in 2023 to try to try to do the whole thing um Okay, moving on. Another great athlete. Andy Dixon won a bottle of champagne at an ultramarathon in November in recognition of being what? Was it the overall winner, the fastest OAP, or the best-looking competitor? <laughs> Surely all three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely stuff. What was it? Was it? Come on, you've got to answer. It was, oh, right. I, I've got to answer. It was uh, first oldie. F Christ. First oldie. So first oldie. Uh, v V50. Based on, his, <laughs> depressing. based on his new 24-hour world record, how far could Alexander Sorokin run in a day? Is it the equivalent of London to Manchester, London to Edinburgh, or London to Dover? Dover. I oh, know, Manchester's like 200 miles. It's that, isn't it? <laughs> right, yeah. It's 200 miles. Yeah, it's yeah. London, it's a, the map guy here. It's London <laughs> to Manchester. So that's 200 miles. London to Edinburgh is 400 miles, and London to Dover is only 80. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, right, final one. Sinead Diver broke the Australian marathon uh, record earlier this month, running a time of 2.21.34. Oh, but how old was she at the time? Was it 40, 45 or 48? Oh, okay, 45. 45. Let's hope for us yet, Ben. 
She's mm. my hero. Mm. <laughs> Don't know. Um, that's the end of, of this quiz. Thanks very much for playing. There's absolutely no prize, although there is a, some Carlsbergs in the corner if anyone wants to go and, <laughs> to, go and take that. They're warm. <laughs> Um, so that brings to the end of this week's One As Well podcast. Thanks very much to listening to our, hun- well, our 200th episode in the company of all the One As Well team. Incredible. And we'll see you again in, in 2023. Yeah. Subscribe to, to everything. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for, for coming on. That's yeah, it. Thanks, team. You're yeah. welcome. A Merry Christmas. A Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas as well. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Happy New Wait. Year. Yeah, and that one as well. Happy, Happy New, New Year, Year as well, yeah. yeah. We don't know when this is coming out. Bye. <laughs>